weekly in-depth view of agriculture up close. This is In the Field. Presented by Gordon's Feed and Pet. We're at the Southwest Missouri Research Center here in Mount Vernon, where livestock producers from all over the Ozarks have gathered for a grazing school. Well, Missouri is unique in the, in the country when, in the fact that we offer grazing schools as a, as a joint effort between the University of Missouri Extension and Natural Resources Conservation Service. And it's been going on actually since 1990. Wow. Uh, so there have been hundreds and hundreds of students to grazing schools in Missouri for many, many years. And, and the whole point of a grazing school is to improve grazing management. Mm -hmm. uh, it's offered for anyone who would like to come and learn how to put a little more science behind their grazing systems and develop them to the point where they have multiple paddocks or pastures uh, and how to set up those pastures correctly mm -hmm. and set up the fencing and the water and uh, actually come in and, and uh, move cattle more efficiently to where they get the most out of those pastures. Well this year school is set up in three different days. So take me through um, the classroom components, the hands-on components and, and what takes place each day that the students can be, take part in. In the classroom setting we're, we're going through the principles of, of grazing management. We call it management intensive grazing and, and those principles uh, help us understand the mathematics behind using uh, a grazing stick, mm -hmm. which is which is kind of unique. A grazing stick is a you know a three foot uh, a ruler uh, that you can use uh, anywhere as, as far as measuring grass. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but what's different about the grazing stick is there's all kinds of calculations on there that you can can use to figure up um, the amount of tonnage that's produced for every inch of grass that's growing in, in, the, in the pasture. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you talked about uh, cow-calf producers, stalkers, uh, sheep and goats, um, anybody that's grazing, uh, that's your audience here? Exactly. And, and take us through, you know, where are these folks from and what are their home operations like? Well, we'll, we'll uh, uh, have people from all over southwest Missouri, but it's not unusual in a grazing school to have someone from another state. Mm -hmm. We've had interest from Texas, wow. uh, New Mexico, Kansas, Arkansas, that would come to these grazing schools. And because many times they're not offered in those states, mm -hmm. but they can learn some of the concepts here. We're kind of a fescue-based area, mm -hmm. so we, we teach it. Yeah, we teach pretty much fescues as our base forage. Mm -hmm. But one of my uh, roles is to introduce other species to them as well as what other alternatives forages that they could use. Basically, I have a cow calf operation. I grow some grain. Got to start growing a little corn to kill out toxic fescue. In about 2008, prices was good. And, and that was a pretty good time to roll over it into some novel fescue. And, uh, but uh, we run mother cows and background precondition all my calves and sell them through a precondition sale. Talk about uh, the type of uh, grass, the forages that are on your operation, how they kind of vary even within Berry County. You know, we're seeing some changes with Bermuda and crabgrass and warm season grasses that's blending in. A lot of no-tilling with the uh, wheat in some of our fescue pastures and rye in the fall and see a lot more no-till probably than we did a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Take me through what led you to, to come to this three day to school and kind of to learn more. I'm looking more at doing a more efficient job with my pastures and uh, hay production and, and cattle is another uh, part of the equation. Mm -hmm. I always said you never learn too much staying at home. You got to kind of get out and uh, you get around some people that's a little bit brighter than you are and maybe a little of it will rub off on you. Well, you talked about a very hands-on approach and we've gone yeah. through the grazing sticks, but I understand you're also going to get out to other farms in the area who are implementing these practices for them to see. You always learn from other producers that are already tr have already been through the schools. Mm -hmm. And so they've set up their systems. They've got multiple paddocks that they graze. And so, and they've gotten diversified species that they're using in their forage programs. And so 
you know, just taking them on farms, we usually try to hit at least three farms in order to, uh, for them to go in, ask, ask them questions and see what, what has worked for them. Uh, in some schools where we can actually do this, we'll start the program by having them go out to the field and we'll divide them into three groups and um, we'll give them um, uh, step-in posts and, and a, a poly wire, electrical fencing mm -hmm. materials that, that's portable and movable. And we'll say, okay, you'll get four head of animals. Uh, we'll put them in uh, to a pasture that you design and go to it. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of them are scratching their heads, okay. What do I do? I've raised cattle this all my life. This is before they've gone this through. This before, exactly. And so because it's before uh, they've actually been trained, mm -hmm. um, they kind of have to figure it out on their own what they're doing. And then 24 hours later, after we put the cattle in, we, we actually can critique how they did. And they've already learned by then, they've already learned the mathematics of grazing. Outside of this, what other resources do you provide them once they get back at home and they're actually implementing it? Well, we, we always try to intro introduce them to uh, uh, the services that are available to them. Through the University of Missouri Extension mm -hmm. Program, we have uh, agronomy specialists, we have uh, uh, ag business uh, field specialists, livestock field specialists, mm -hmm. dairy specialists that they are not aware of. Some of them didn't realize that we exist. And yeah. so we always try to, to introduce them to our specialists so they know, you know who are some resources for them when the school's over. Uh, when it comes to the curriculum of the pro program, uh, grazing, grazing management, the art and science of grazing management is one thing. Uh, we, we focus a lot on the soils and soil health and then soil fertility, uh, fertility management, uh, the different forages and species, species that are available to them. Um, we also get into the economics of grazing systems. So we have a, a section that just focuses on, on economics. We talked about the economics of rotational grazing, intensive grazing. Yeah. Um, it is more labor intensive. You are out there with your animals daily, moving, you know, setting up the electrical fences and rotating them through that, um, but it pays off. And that's, that's we the believe it line. does. I mean, when you're out there with your animals, you're seeing what's going on. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're watching the grass, you're watching the cow manure piles, yeah. which tells you something. They learn about that in, in the class. And uh, you're watching the, the animals, the health of the animals. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing instead of watching them from the road, mm -hmm. you know. Drive by. Uh, a big, big open field. Mm -hmm. um, they're out there, you count them, and you go on. That's not really good management. Good management is walking among them. So what advice might you give to uh, someone who is interested in coming to a grazing conference, interested in learning more about what they can do on their, their home operation to, to kind of uh, mitigate costs, but also look at the efficiencies on the operation when it comes to grazing? If you've got a very, any size of operation, uh, if you've got 40 acres, it's, it's important. And uh, I think you sure get your money's worth. And, then you meet some people here that uh, we, we get acquainted with. We can all talk to one another because we've mm -hmm. got one common goal. And uh, we're, we try to be good stewards of the land. And uh, I think all of us want to leave this land a little better than what we found it. And uh, I sure do for the next generation. And uh, the improvements we make for whoever follows us, uh, we're leaving a, a pretty good trail.